Okay guys, so I've never been more hyped to talk about a chapter of Eden Zero than I am currently right now, because dudes, this chapter confirms something that I've been saying for months now, and that is that we get finally confirmation that Ijuna, Shure's assistant, is actually Princess, the character that Laguna mentioned back in chapter 140 as being the daughter of the Oasis group's former boss. And this is like, wow. I mean, I saw the hints and I saw the, you know, setup for that reveal, but honestly, when I first came up with this theory, I mean, I was just kind of taking a shot in the dark and just hoping that it would end up coming true. And you know what? It sure enough did. Anyway, jumping right into the chapter, we have the Oasis group talking about what's currently going on over on Temple, and it does give them hope that they might actually be finally able to take down the Empire, which, I mean, so far everything does seem to be leading towards that. But we gotta remember that Poseidon did see in his dice that he's going to get what he wants at the end of this. So things might not work out exactly as they think they are going to. And then we cut over to the Eden Zero and we see that both Sister and Herman are back up and fully healed. So I guess that means that Couchpo was able to figure out how to work Sister's medical equipment and heal them. Which I mean does make sense because back when we got her character stat sheet, we did see that her knowledge was actually her highest stat and actually the highest knowledge that we've seen so far, at least amongst the humans. So yeah, I would believe that she'd be able to figure it out with some time. And now that the two of them are back up and running, they are on a warpath to go and find Shura and save Witch because they don't want to lose her the same way they lost Valkyrie. But Couchpo is able to stop them by reminding them that they're the only ones capable of defending the ship while everyone else is gone. And that Shiki is on the job and they should really just put their faith in her captain and let him save her, which I think confirms that Shiki will end up saving Witch by the end of the arc. So I have this theory that Witch, Hermit, and Sister will each end up dying and be replaced with Wise, Rebecca, and one other member of the team before the series is over, just like how Homura took Valkyrie's spot amongst these Shining Four Stars. And I thought that this arc might be the start of it with Witch's death, but Rebecca's not fully trained just yet, so it makes sense that Hero might be holding off on killing her off until Rebecca's fully trained and ready to take the spot. Anyway, then we cut over to Shiki and his crew, and they come across this web of strings, and as soon as Shiki touches it, the threads wrap around him and Rebecca's arms, making the two of them fall in love. So basically, this ability is the Aether Gear version of the Red String of Fate, which as I'm sure you guys are already aware of, but it's the whole myth that, you know, two people who are connected by a Red String are destined to fall in love with each other. Now, once Happy cuts the string, the two of them instantly go from being in love to hating each other and begin to fight. And then this is when Ijuna shows up and reveals that her ability is pretty much exactly as I stated, you know, they touch the strings, the string connects them, they fall in love, and then once it's cut, they end up hating each other and are forced to fight. Now, Happy, Pino, and Moskoi all think that beating Ijuna is the best and quickest way to get rid of the effects on Shiki and Rebecca, which I mean, they're not exactly wrong, beating her would do the job, but you would think the easiest way to stop them would be to use Pino's EMP. Now that she can target it, just use it on the two of them when they're on top of each other and that should take care of it. But instead, they try to attack her only for Moskoi to be easily knocked away. Then Laguna shows up and turns the two of them into water because they both start to cry. And the reason why they cry is because both Shiki and Rebecca are conscious of what they're doing, but they're unable to stop themselves from doing it due to the effects of Red String of Destiny. And this is when we get the big reveal that Ijuna is actually Princess. But we don't get any details on how she got to this point where she's actually working for the Empire that she was once trying to take down. But I think I figured out what happened to change her, and it's actually kind of simple. So in the chapter, it's implied through a quick flashback that Ijuna probably looked up to or maybe had feelings for Laguna. And then, when he left the group, she was most likely very heartbroken about that. Then, when she went to rescue the members of Oasis that were captured, as we found out in chapter 140, she must have been caught as well, and more than likely, Shura tortured her as we all know he has no problem doing. And then after she eventually broke and started to resent the Oasis group for putting her in the situation, Shura more than likely came in and you know offered her some kind of deal where she would end up working for him in exchange for getting back at the Oasis group for basically putting her in the situation where she lost her dad and ended up being tortured. Or, you know, maybe they were already working together after, you know, her dad died off. Maybe she saw that the Oasis group was wrong and, you know, didn't want to work with them anymore. And you sure as a scapegoat as to get away from them. And, you know, her going to rescue those members of the Oasis group that were captured was probably just a lie that she came up with as a way to easily get away from them and go work for sure. 
I don't know if either one of those are actually even close to being what actually happened, but I'm sure we're going to end up finding out in like the next chapter or two. Anyway, that's it for the video guys, thanks for watching, I really do hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys thought about the video and the chapter, and if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Anyway, I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Peace.